Hey everyone, Kirby Hosman here, and I wanted to talk to you about something that happened recently that uh, kind of rocked the world of a bunch of people who were social media users, social media marketers, and uh, also just people who have businesses where they market themselves on uh, social media. Uh, as I'm recording this, just a couple weeks ago, Facebook and Instagram went down for about six hours. They just went dark. And at first it was just like, oh, okay, I actually, you know, Facebook never goes down. And so I actually wondered if my Wi-Fi wasn't working properly. And then you realize that, you know, Facebook was dark for about six hours. And it really got me thinking that with so many of us who market our business utilizing social media and specifically Facebook, you know, what do we do? when Facebook goes away. So I uh, really spent some time thinking about some things that you might do to continue to promote your organization, promote your business, if Facebook and Instagram actually did go away. I, do I documented this on our blog at hosmanmarketing.com. You can go check it out and read that for yourself, but I wanted to go over a few of them here on this video. So what are some things that you could do if and when Facebook, Instagram goes away? And you know, and here's the thing, I mean, at some point they probably will because that's what happens in the evolution of business. You know, we all thought that Sears would never go away and some of these other organizations wouldn't and they do. So here are a couple things that you might be able to do if the uh, sort of monster that is Facebook does go away. So first of all, you could move to another platform, right? That's when I start talking to marketing experts and including my buddy, Bill Petrie, you know, his first response is, look, if Facebook goes away, it's probably because another platform has taken over. So as a marketer, as a business, you need to be moving to that platform. And that's, that's a great piece of advice. It really is. But on the other side, it's like, what if that particular platform isn't one you enjoy working on or more to the point, what if it's a platform that you don't have any following on now at all? So all of a sudden you, you spent that time building that audience on Facebook and now you have to start over. So the takeaway there is that if you think you're going to have to start, if, if Facebook were to go away and you're going to have to start a whole new platform, it might be time to start thinking about building that platform now. Spend a little bit of extra time to work on building your platform on LinkedIn or TikTok or Snapchat or whatever, um, YouTube, to sort of build that audience there as well, as opposed to being so single-minded like a lot of organizations are. A lot of people said over that six-hour period, there were businesses who lost millions of dollars because their entire business model was in Facebook. I'm not bashing Facebook. I think it's a really important marketing tool, but being totally, totally reliant on it is part of the challenge. So what's another thing you can do? Use physical marketing. So during this pandemic, the last 18 to 24 months, one of the things that's been really interesting to me is the uh, increase in credibility of branded merchandise. So doing curated collections of branded merchandise is a great way, and it's been proven over the pandemic, to uh, let your employees know that you care about them, build camaraderie, continue to build culture, to promote your business. And so it might be an opportunity for you to look at creating a really cool piece of curated branded merchandise to start getting in front of your best clients. You would do that if Facebook went away, right? Well, again, this might be the time. The takeaway of that is if that's something you need to do, it might be something to explore doing now. So look at your top 20% of clients. This might be the time to create a quarterly mailing that goes out to them that let them know that you really appreciate their business. Next up, let's talk about the difference between rented media and owned media. So as business owners forever, we've been super comfortable with the idea of renting media, meaning that the newspaper, the radio, the TV station, they have the audience. And then as business owners, we're gonna rent that space. We're gonna get a little bit of time in there and kind of tell our story. So we rent that. Well, when social media kind of came around, I think a lot of people thought, oh, well now this is my audience. And we found out pretty quickly that when Facebook wants to change the algorithm, they change the algorithm. It's not our audience, it's theirs. They own, those, they own that, that audience. We still rent them. And so one of the ways to get around that is to start to collect your customers and prospects data via email or text message. And early on, it was really easy to do this. You just said, hey, sign up for my newsletter and people would do it. I think now we are also inundated with emails. You have to really give something of value. And so maybe it's something on your website that says, hey, this is a, a free tip, or maybe it's a, a special offer or 
you know, there's there's things you can do. Like for us, we we have created the five day marketing course. So if you sign up for it, you get five days of marketing. We it, when we try to really add a ton of value, but then you are in our funnel, and we um, we can send you messages when we want to, not when Facebook says it's okay. And so that's the difference between rented media and owned media. And so the the, the takeaway is now to look at creating an offer for your customers or prospects to opt in. So they want to sign up so that you have their contact information and communicate to them when you want to. Now's the time to start doing that before you absolutely have to. Next up, have a website that works. You know, I think so many people have websites um, that are brochure websites, what I call. And, And we had one for a long time. It was like, if you go and find us, you can learn about us and what we do. But there's not really any search engine optimization. If somebody searches for you, they may or may not find you. And you can search for yourself. Don't search for yourself because you know, they'll find, you'll find yourself as a company, but search for the thing that you offer and see how you're doing. And the reality of it is if you aren't on that first page, you're invisible to your prospects. So it might be the time to really work on upgrading your website. Um, so that when people come there, there's there's value, there's content, there's you're answering people's questions, and oh by the way, you're creating that opt-in where you can collect data as well. So the takeaway is simply to start working on a website that really tells your story and acts as a business builder. It's not just an expense for your business. And then finally, finally the headline is put it in writing. And what I mean by that is during the pandemic, you know, I think we went back to things that used to work because we were needing to get back to basics. And we've heard for years, oh, print is dead. And I'm, t- I'm here to tell you when all of this happened and we didn't have, social media was the only way to get to our customers and we couldn't physically go in stores, direct mail became a really important piece and a very affordable piece. So it's one of those things that you can start to create creative mailers that can reach directly into the homes or the offices of your prospects or clients. And so, don't discount something that other people aren't doing because it actually, if they're not doing it, it actually opens up the space for you to do it and do it well. So the takeaway there is just don't forget about print to tell your story. So those are a few things that you can do to effectively market your business if Facebook and Instagram were to go away. And I think the really important takeaway is you don't have to wait for that emergency you can start to do some of these things today so that, you know, if that happens, you're already set up for success. So if you have any more questions about this, please head to our website, hossmanmarketing.com. We've got blogs, a blog there that we try to provide a ton of value. And obviously you can opt in on our five-day marketing course as well. So thanks so much. We'll see you next time.